Thanks, Riaz. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock on the dot. After days on life support, a Surrey woman allegedly attacked by her husband has died. Narinda Kralsi passed away yesterday afternoon, one week after she was rushed to hospital with critical injuries. Her husband, Baldev, was initially charged with aggravated assault, which was later upgraded to attempted murder. With Narinder's death, a second upgrade is now expected. Baldev Kalzi was left with facial injuries after he was attacked while in custody at the Surrey Pretrial Centre. He's since been moved, removed, that is, as president of Brookside Sikh Temple. Two and a half years after Occupy Vancouver ended, another occupation has sprung up. But the city is telling the homeless tenters camping out in Oppenheimer Park to leave. They say they've received two eviction notices from the city and now they are protesting. The group is demanding an end to homelessness and better social housing options. In response to all of this, the protesters have also issued a symbolic eviction notice of their own. They claim the land belongs to Indigenous peoples, not the city. And I've been waiting for native housing over nine months now. I've been waiting in the park here, sleeping in the rain, on the ground. They don't have nowhere to go. The city says camping and erecting structures in parks is not allowed because they create barriers for other people who want to use public areas. With the threat of a second strike looming, container truckers in Metro Vancouver are set to meet with the government today. Unionized truckers have accused both the federal and provincial governments of failing to follow up on a promise to legislate and enforce a minimum rate for, of pay for drivers. A spokesperson for Unifor has said truckers will go on strike if the government doesn't follow up on its promise soon. Unionized truckers went on strike for more than two weeks back in March. The job action also involved non-union truckers and it crippled operations at Port Metro Vancouver. A coroner's inquest begins today and we'll hear the circumstances surrounding the death of a First Nations man shot by police early last year. 45-year-old Ryan Allen Walter Jacob was shot near McDonald and Hastings in Burnaby in January of 2013 after RCMP responded to reports of a man with a knife in the area. Jacob was the son of Squamish First Nation Chief Gibby Jacob. The jury will hear evidence from witnesses surrounding the death. The Independent Investigations Office has also been handling this case. Police have finished their search of the land connected to the disappearance of five-year-old Nathan O'Brien and his grandparents. For two weeks, dozens of officers had control of the property as they searched for clues near Calgary. Douglas Garland, who lived on this site, is reported to be on suicide watch in jail. He has been charged with first and second degree murder in the disappearance of the family. The UN Security Council could vote on a resolution demanding international inspectors getting unlimited access to the crash site of Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 today. The resolution would demand pro-Russian rebels who control the crash site stop military activities in the area. The rebels say they've placed the bodies of almost 200 victims of the Malaysia Airlines disaster in four refrigerated rail cars in eastern Ukraine. It's unclear what has happened to the remains of the other 100 victims. All 298 people aboard the Boeing 777 were killed when it was shot down last Thursday. Many major airlines have also confirmed that they are now avoiding Ukraine airspace. Death toll from Israel's 13-day-old offensive against Hamas militants has increased again, according to Gaza. They say 508 Palestinians have been killed, including 65 in Gaza City, during a bloody ground battle with Israeli forces. The Israeli death toll is now standing at 20, most of them soldiers. Early this morning, Israel launched more airstrikes against Hamas. Three days after being forced from their houses by wildfire, 2,400 people living in West Kelowna have now been allowed to return home. But those living within the Smith Creek fire area could still have to leave on a moment's notice. But 100 others are still on evacuation order. The 260 hectare wildfire is said to be about 50% contained. Not much has changed for the 15 square kilometer Botany Road wildfire burning near Linton. About 150 people are affected by the ongoing evacuation order. There's no word on when they will be allowed to return. Cooler and wetter weather over the weekend has decreased the risk of fire around much of our prov province. 
Many people in Washington state returned to find nothing left of their homes after flames ripped through Okanagan County. The Carleton Complex fire is said to be the top priority in the area with firefights, firefighters coming in from as far away as Minnesota to fight this blaze. Crews are expected to be there for the foreseeable future. At last check, the fire was over 96,000 hectares in size.